broadcast and for all that they will touch. Lord, that your word will go out in truth, that your spirit has gone out with her music. Amen. That you, Heavenly Father, will be lifted up through this, and that your spirit will be seen and known and experienced by all who are in attendance tonight. Hallelujah. May the glory, the honor, and the praise be given to you. Amen. And may all the hearts and minds be touched. In the name of Jesus Christ from Nazareth, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Well, children of God, here we are. After so many of your prayers have gone up on our behalf, so many of you have kept us in your prayers it has taken a long time for us to bring you here hasn't it yes. <laughs> yes it has I have been waiting to come here with you for a long time <laughs> <laughs> and I thank God for opening the door for me to come here with you and I am so happy to be uh, to sing for all of our listeners and thank them for their uh, prayers for us. <laughs> Amen. 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 We do know that many of you have been praying for us that a lot of you have have known, have heard me talk about the things that have happened in bringing her here. And tonight, I'd like to talk about some other people who did do a lot of praying for things and show you that people appreciate prayers and that prayers on behalf of others are important. But first, because sometimes the answers to our prayers are not immediate. We don't kneel down and ask God for something, wake up or get up, open the door, and it's there. Sometimes things do take time. And that's where trusting God comes in, honoring God, having faith and knowing that he loves and cares about you comes in. Let's take a look starting at Luke chapter 1 verses 10 through 20. 
And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were outside, were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, to Zechariah, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along with years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent here to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. If you take a look at this, Zachariah and Elizabeth had been married for a long time. And just figuring they got married at about 17 or 18, and it says that they were old now, so even if you want to consider old back then to be 50, maybe 60, how long do you think it was after their marriage that Zachariah noticed that something was wrong, that Elizabeth was not getting pregnant? How long do you think it took him before he began to pray for this? Because while he was in there burning the incense, while he was in the temple burning the incense, and the angel appeared to him and told him that his prayer had been answered, that his prayer had been heard, he wasn't talking about the prayers he was offering for the people. He was talking about the prayers that Zechariah had been crying out to God for pleading with God for to bring a, a child into the lives of him and his wife. This is the prayer the angel was specifically referring to. Now, even if you think 40 years, 30, 40, maybe more years that Zechariah was in prayer over this, every night, every morning, every afternoon, on duty in the temple, and off duty in the temple. The one thing he was thinking about was praying for this to happen, was praying for Elizabeth to finally conceive and have a child. Did God hear their prayers? Yes. Did God withhold it out of meanness to them? No. Was he not granting their requests? for a specific reason? Yes, he was. Why? Because their child was going to have a specific job to do. God waited to bless Zachariah and Elizabeth well past the age where they should have been able to have children. Well past this time in their lives, he waited till then because John the Baptist was going to be the herald for Jesus Christ. He was going to speak to who Jesus is. That was why he waited. It wasn't a denial. It was a delay. It wasn't out of disrespect. It wasn't out of any 
sin in their lives. It was out of God's timing. God had his time to bring John the Baptist onto the face of this earth. He had his time to bless Zachariah and Elizabeth with the child that they had longed for for so many years. It was his love and care, not only for Elizabeth and Zachariah, who were shown God's power. They were shown God's power, that he could do what man couldn't. At this age, Zechariah could not have gotten Elizabeth pregnant. At this age, Elizabeth could not have become pregnant. God can do what man cannot do. And God never rejected him. He never looked at him as being any less. The people in the village, they looked down, down their noses at them because they didn't have kids. Like, what's wrong with them? He's in the temple. How come they can't have kids? What's wrong with, with their lives? What's wrong with them? Nothing was wrong with them. God's timing. God's purpose. I don't always get things when I want them. Okay? It doesn't always happen. There, there's a saying that we serve a crock-pot God in a microwave world. God knew the time for Rose to come to this country. He knew the right time for her to be here with me. And isn't it amazing that just when I finally got the house almost finished is when she arrived? When things were ready, which I, I had hoped for and prayed for, that the house would be ready, that things would be in their place? That was the time that she was on the plane to come here? God knew. I didn't, because I would have had her here months ago. Amen. I, would have, I would have had her here a year ago. But God knew the right time to bring her on the plane. God knew what was going to happen. God had it in his heart to bless us. And not only to bless us, but to bless others through us. If I can encourage you tonight, children of God, whatever it is that you have been praying for, whatever it is that you have been holding on to, whatever desire that you have in your heart, don't give up on it. Keep praying about it. Unless God specifically says, give it up, don't give it up. Unless God specifically tells you that he has something else in mind, if this is on your heart, keep it in your prayers. Keep going on your knees before God. Elizabeth and Zachariah kept it up day after day, week after week, year after year, laying it out before God, praying to God. How many of them do you think had their families praying also? Because Gabriel was the same angel that went to Mary. Do you think Mary might have been praying for her cousin? Do you think that she might have been in prayer for her too? Because Gabriel makes a specific point of letting her know that Elizabeth is pregnant. He makes that specific point to her. The whole family was involved. And when the blessing came, when the blessing came, the whole family, everybody who had prayed, everybody who had any concern with this, Everybody who had known about it and worked on it, everybody got blessed. Tonight, listeners, thank you for your prayers on our behalf. Because tonight, God answered our prayers. And as I promised you, she would be in here to sing for all of you. And by the grace of God, she has. And I am so grateful to God for Him having done this for us. The next section of Scripture I would like to go to is Matthew chapter 21, verses 18 to 
22. Early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, May you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly, they asked. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to this fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, Go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Amen. John, in First John, writes that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that we have the desires that we asked of him. Okay. I believe that it was God's will for Rose and I to be together. I believe that this is what God had planned, and as surely as I am sitting here next to her right now, I believe that even stronger now than I did then. I am not, children of God, I am not a giant of faith. Okay? I am not. Okay? I walk along, trip over my own two feet, I fall down, I make mistakes, the only thing I do is I get back up again. I've made a lot of mistakes. I did not trust God as much as I should have in all of this. And God showed me that he had the plan from the beginning. Okay. Do I believe that God has a plan for each and every one of you? That God has a plan based on his love? Children of God, God is not angry with you. God may be angry at some of the things that you have done, but the minute you repent and turn away from those things, he welcomes you back the same way the father welcomed back the prodigal son, completely, unreservedly, and totally welcomed back into the family, given all the full rights of sonship or daughtership. The whole message of this ministry is wherever you've been, whatever you've done, God loves you, and God wants you back. Amen. His love for you has not stopped. If, if you are looking for something, if you are waiting for something, for an open door, for a healing in a relationship, for a new relationship to begin, don't give up. Use Elizabeth and Zachariah as your model. He has not forgotten you, but he is waiting for for his timing. Follow him, trust him, and walk with him. Amen. Because when you know that what happens is based on his love for you, not on somebody else's judgment against you, then you can walk in faith and in confidence, trusting him, trusting that he wants good things and blessings for you. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 8 through 11. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt like we had received the sentence of death. But this happened, that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope, 
that he will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Paul understood the value of prayer. Paul understood the value of the prayers of others on his behalf. God heard your prayers for us. God saw every time, every time you mentioned us, thought about us in your prayers, he saw it, he heard it, he noted it. And by the grace of God, share the joy that we have. Share the joy. Paul wanted the people that had kept him in prayer to share the joy that he had. Okay? It, from our hearts, both of us, we would like you to share in our joy and in knowing that God has us together for a purpose. And if that purpose can mean some blessing to you, if there is something that we can give, something from this ministry, something from her music, my message, something here that God can use to bless you, it's yours. It's from God. Take it as a gift from God, not from us. It's not from me. It's from God. Okay? God gave me abilities, and God gave me the opportunities to use them. God has given her a multitude of abilities, and now she has the opportunity to use them. But these gifts are for the building up of the church. Children of God, you're the church. You are the body of believers. You are the children of God. You are His temple, and the Holy Spirit resides in you. Remember this, children of God. God loves you. You are His precious and much-loved child. Ephesians 6, verses 18 through 20. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. In the country of Vietnam, Christianity is... Would you say, honey, that it is against the law to be a Christian? <laughs> Christianity is not accepted in her country. Yet, she taught children and she taught adults. She is, right now, in case you are wondering, she is still a little intimidated about trying to speak much in English. I think she does fine, but she needs to become more comfortable with it. She taught children how to pray, to worship God, from her heart to reach others, and now she's here, children of God, now she's here. I am grateful for all of you who have prayed for me to be able to bring a message of hope and encouragement and conviction. I appreciate your prayers and I thank you for them. And whatever I do, may it be by the grace of God and for the glory of God and may it give something to you for your heart in whatever situation you're in. Paul taught people while he was in chains.
Philippians chapter 1, verses 18 through 20. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. Amen. And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, Amen. and I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. Paul was all set to go, whether he was going to heaven or whether he was going somewhere to preach. That was his joy. That was his mission on this earth. But look at this, verse 19. For I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. Mm -hmm. Paul appreciated, respected, and requested prayers to be made for him. And he acknowledged that God did things in his life, through his life, and for him because of the prayers of others on his behalf. Okay. God appreciates the prayers of his children. God appreciates your prayers for others. Maybe you don't see an answer coming. You've been praying for someone to come to Christ day after day, week after week, year after year. You keep praying for this person and they are just as far away now as they were when you started. But it takes one minute, in fact, less than one minute for them to turn to God. It takes one, less than one minute for them to accept Christ as their Savior. That one instant when they quit running, when they turn around and say, Jesus, come into my heart and mind. I accept you as my Savior and Lord. In that one instant, all those prayers that you have lifted up have been granted. All those requests made by you have been answered. God sees your prayers. God hears your prayers. And God acknowledges you and your prayers. Okay. your prayers on your behalf on behalf of your family your friends on behalf of people you do not even know but yet you're asked to pray for okay and God sees that and he appreciates all that you do for others okay. God is lifted up and glorified and you can be a part of that Philippians 4, verses 5 through 7. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When you trust that God has your best in His heart, when you come to believe that God has your best in His heart and He wants what is best for you, that He loves and cares for you, then, then that peace can fill you. If you are worried and wondering, does God really care? It's really hard to have peace. It's really hard to trust in God 
when you are not even sure that He loves and cares for you. But when you know, and children of God, I say no because there is no doubt. Whoever you are, there is nothing that you have done that has separated you from the love of God. There is nothing that you have done, there is no place that you have been that has separated you from God's love because God's love, God is love. Okay? He cannot stop loving. Okay? He loves you. He may not like what you had done, but the minute you repent, it is over and done with. And Jesus took the penalty for everything that you have done and nailed it to the cross. There is no penalty now because Jesus paid it. That price is as good for you as it is for me, as it is for Rose, all of us. There's not a single one of us who is here without sin. And whatever sin we have committed, big ones, little ones, doesn't matter. He took all of them. All of them. It is His salvation, period. We can't add anything to it. And here's another thing for you. You see, God knew what you were going to do before you were even here to do it. God already knew. Our days are written out in His book. He already knew where you were going off the path. He already knew what you were going to do. There is no sin that you have committed that He doesn't already know about and the price has not already been paid for. Okay? You are wanted in His family. The adoption price has been paid. His love goes to you. And that is what He does everything by. Okay? His love. His wisdom. His knowledge. Remember, He says that greater, higher, His wisdom is higher than us, higher than the sky is over the earth. We don't get it, but He is there. All right, He is there, yeah. and His love for us has not, will not, cannot, and does not stop. Second Thessalonians three, verses one through three. As for other matters, brothers and sisters, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored, just as it was with you. And pray that we may be delivered from wicked and evil people, for not everyone has faith. But the Lord is faithful, and He will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Children of, your God, uh, children of God, I'm going to come right out and say it. Please keep us in your prayers. We are a team together for God, and we need your prayers. And we ask you to remember us in your prayers, and we pray that as you see God using us, that you can be blessed in it. You know, it, in Corinthians, Paul writes, when one part of the body is hurt, the whole body hurts. When one part of the body rejoices, the whole body rejoices. Rejoice with us. Keep us in your prayers. And if there is something on your heart and mind, call in to the studio. Let us get it down, and we will be in prayer on your behalf. I thank you, and I appreciate your prayers. You can know that when you call in, you will be in our prayers. All right? And we will pray together. And God will grant the requests, not just because of me, not, not just because I get down on my knees and pray. No. God will grant your, our requests, your requests, based on His love for you and the prayers of His people reaching up to Him on your behalf. God loves you. 
get a hold of that children of God. God doesn't love me more. God doesn't love her more. God doesn't love Billy Graham more. God loves us. Okay. He Amen. loves each one of us. Amen. The book of Philemon. Very short book. Verses 21 and 22. Confident of your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I ask. And one thing more. Prepare a guest room for me, because I hope to be restored to you in answer to your prayers. Paul knew he was being prayed for. He knew Philemon was praying for him. And in answer to your prayers, God is going to do this. Okay, I believe that God is going to do this. He is going to bring me back to you. You have been praying for this. God is going to grant it to you. Okay, That's Paul in jail telling his friend, your prayers are going to be answered. Okay, I'm going to be restored to you. Okay, I hope to be restored to you because of your prayers. Because God loves you and he knows that you want this, he is going to grant it to you, and I am going to be there. Yes. All right? Amen. Children of God, believe it or not, God does not love or did not love, does not love, that's better, does not love Paul any more than he loves you. You are just as important and special to God as the Apostle Paul. It doesn't matter if you never wrote anything. You haven't yet. That doesn't mean you won't. It doesn't matter if you have never preached a sermon. It doesn't matter. Your sermon is your life. Your message is how you live your life. God sees you as a valuable, important, special, and loved child. Okay. And He will continue to see you in that way throughout your entire life. James chapter 5 verses 13 through 18 Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call for the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer offered in faith will 